So I think we'll turn to the last speaker. Uh, this morning, Timo Terraswerta showed us that it is valuable to look back in history. So if we do so, I think we, it's quite easily learned that a Rex usually has many sons. But I think it's only until recently that we believe in the truth of the sentence, the Rex has many fathers. And I'm uh, very pleased to introduce one of the fathers of Rex, Dr. Daryl Prebigan from AT&T. And as far as I understand his paper, he will be talking about it, the change in the paradigm of the expert systems community. Uh, first, they started, let the expert system be the master on top of the slave, the statistical software product. And I think now uh, the opinion is, uh, try to train uh, the slave so that he can become a master. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can everyone hear me? Being a traditionalist, I would like to start by thanking Professor uh, Pukla for uh, making statistical computing one of the themes of the conference and also including me among the list of distinguished otherwise distinguished invited speakers. Uh, my, uh, I, I will start off also with an apology. Uh, my abstract did come in very late, and uh, it is uh, passed out, but it doesn't bear much relationship to what I'm going to be talking about, so don't bother looking for it right now. Uh, but uh, there also will be no paper uh, for the thing, for this talk, and partly because of the nature of the work, uh, as Professor uh, Mustanen has given us, given us a demonstration of his work, with computing topics, it's always better to give a demonstration rather than to uh, give a paper to catch the dynamic aspect. Uh, what I know that uh, you don't, but Professor Mustanen does, is that there's a generalized law of demonstrations. And uh, it also has another variable in called D for distance. <laughs> And I wasn't willing to risk the uh, decrease in probability here that any such demonstration I would give of our software would ever work. I just point out that if I was at my home base and was giving the demo uh, to myself uh, and I had a particular time limit, it would work out to one. But anyway, uh, uh, there is limited time. I don't think a demo would work. Uh, we are making a movie of the, the latest system, so we can eliminate much of the demo effect. One of my colleagues will be showing it in France. There's a conference in Versailles, I think in September, and hopefully uh, soon uh, I can maybe even send the, the, the film out. So today there's uh, not much time for details. I basically would like to tell you uh, uh, what's, what has been done, uh, what we're currently doing, and why we're doing it. Um, uh, first of all, I am talking about putting statistical expertise into software. And you might ask, why would we ever want to do such a thing? And as statisticians, one good motivation for doing this is that uh, it'll make statistical or programming environments better for us to do our work. Okay. I also think that if you're a non-statistician, putting expertise into software will help non-statisticians get better, higher quality analyses of their data. And this final point is the one I would like to stress. It's the one I'm most interested in. And that is, by putting statistical expertise into software, we can actually study the data analysis process itself. Now, if we're thinking about putting expertise into software, that software can take many different forms. If we're making software for non-statisticians, it's come under the name expert systems. And those types of systems are, are fairly uh, interactive, uh, some, maybe somewhat automated, uh, but it, it's sort of in the middle. If we're making systems for statisticians, we want very passive systems. We don't want the system to dominate a statistician because we don't ever think that we can dominate or capture in a, in a computer what the statistician knows. So such a system would have to be very passive. In this last category, to study the data analysis process itself, the system has to be highly automated. Why? If we're, well, for instance, if we're trying to study a particular data analysis procedure such as regression, now, when I mean regression, I mean taking a problem from beginning to the end. And we want to study that whole process. 
Well, when we typically study a statistical estimator that's somewhat complicated, we might use Monte Carlo techniques. Well, here we might want to Monte Carlo a whole analysis. And in order to Monte Carlo or bootstrap an entire analysis for a particular data set, we're going to have to have the whole process of the regression analysis, including transformations, outliers, uh, heterogeneity of variance, all captured in the computer system. And then we can replicate it many times on the same data set or other data sets. Then we can capture the variability of a particular schema for doing a complete analysis. But to do that, the system would have to be highly automated. Well, what do I mean exactly by the term statistical expertise? Well, what I'll draw on is an analogy uh, that Polya has derived for uh, describing what he means by mathematical expertise, that is, exper expertise to solve uh, math problems. Uh, he has four essential stages to solving the typical math problem, that is, understanding the problem. What are, what are the data in the problem? What are the conditions that have to be satisfied? What are the unknowns? Devising a plan to the solution. Have we seen such a problem like this before? Are we going to use analogy? Are we going to start with a more general problem to get to the answer to this specific problem? That's devising a plan. Then we actually have to carry out the plan. That is, we, we know what we're, we're trying to set out to do. We start doing it, and we make checks along the way to make sure that the plan that we started with, we keep to it, and we take it to a logical end. The final step, looking back, is the one that's probably hardest for the students of math to do and seldom done. And I think the same will, will go for statistics. That is looking back. We had a problem. We understood it. We devised a plan. We carried out the plan. Looking back means let's actually study the process of problem solving now. Can we or could we have, could we apply this plan in other settings? Can we think of a different plan? Are there shortcuts we could have made? Can, could we have gotten here much quicker now that we're, now that we're there? This is the, one of the hardest things for students to learn, both in, in just about every field. And it's one in particular in data analysis that we really haven't uh, taken care of. Well, in, in data analysis or statistical problem solving, what do we mean here? Understanding the problem, that is, conversing with the subject matter people, knowing exactly what their problem is and, how to, and what they're interested in, what the data are, what conditions both in time and resources are available. Devising a plan. The, the idea here, is this a, a generic regression problem, a classification problem? What variables are we going to basically use? Or what basic data are we going to use in solving their problem? Carrying out the plan is probably what most people refer to as data analysis. This is the actual nitty gritty of doing the regression analysis. That is the step by step Say we're going to do a regression, knowing about all the things we do, we, we make checks along the way, we, we look at residuals, we do diagnostics, this is carrying out the plan. Looking back, again, is something that I don't think we're doing very well in. That is, we typically do an analysis, we do do residual analyses, we do do diagnostics. We tend, when we look back, to look at a very narrow portion of our analysis. So we develop new methodologies for the small, but we don't develop a methodology for the large. That is the whole sequence of analysis <laughs> steps. So now by statistical expertise that we can capture in software, I think it's largely going to be in this third category, carrying out the plan. We're not going to be successful in implementing expertise in the first two, primarily because this depends so much on the context of the problem. And this is where, what humans are so good at and computers are so bad at, common sense reasoning, knowing how to interact with the subject matter person. We can't teach a computer that much. Looking back is something we may be able to get at in the future. There are AI systems for learning. Uh, they're a long way off. For the present, we're going to concentrate, and in particular in this talk, on carrying out a plan. So just repeating slightly, the type of expertise that I'm thinking about going into so putting into software is not the context-dependent knowledge. That is, it is not the interaction we have with the client and the s specialization or the reduction of the problem into something like classical regression. That all has to be done outside of a computer system. Now, once it comes down to the point where this is a generic regression problem, that's when I think we can actually try to implement uh, an analysis plan. So the 
So the part we are going to try to automate or implement is carrying out of a particular plan to do data analysis. And carrying out the plan is, in fact, making clear the sequence of steps that we go through when we do a particular type of analysis, including the checks that we make along the way, maybe what brief explorations we do to competing models at various stages. And usually in an analysis, there's what I'll call the aha stage, where you're working on a particular data set and finally something hits you, either clearly in a plot or something else, and basically that changes the direction of the analysis and really homes you in on a uh, definitive answer. But that's the part where we're actually thinking about implementing. Well, our plan's really algorithms. If, if we can think of data analysis as an algorithm, that would simplify matters. I mean, we have algorithms to, to invert a matrix. That means something like a whole regression analysis can be made very simple. Uh, I think it is an algorithm, but much different than an algorithm, a procedural algorithm to implement uh, a matrix inversion. Uh, I'll call these declarative algorithms rather than procedural. And th this is standard jargon in the computer science community, where declarative, by what we, we mean by, we'll tell the system what we want done. And a procedural method is telling the system how we want it done. If we're going to invert a matrix, we say we want to invert a matrix. We don't say we're going to use the Gauss-Seidel method of inverting a matrix. We're not going to use a Kolesky decomposition. That, de that a plan is an algorithm, but it's a declarative algorithm. And those, in fact, are, I think, much harder to specify than the, the procedural. Now, in fact, for instance, in, in modeling, we have a generic algorithm that we use, at least the, uh, a, a reasonable algorithm that we use at a very high level is the following, that in a modeling plan, we have data being decomposed into a part called, we'll call the fit, and another part residual. The declarative specification of the data analysis algorithm or plan is to get some fit, that is use some procedure that will get you fitted values, get the residuals, look at those, if they have some structure left, iterate, get a new fit, keep trying to explain as much of the residual variation as possible, and keep going around. So that is more or less the general plan that we come up with when we do data analysis. Now, when we actually carry out the plan, there's a lot that goes on in there. And so the question is, well, how much detail goes into a plan? Well, again, a simple plan, or a slightly uh, less simple plan, would be one that says, in this particular application, it makes sense to split the data into two groups and do a regression in both and then summarize the results. Well, that's a simple declarative algorithm or plan. To actually carry it out, we have to specify exactly what we mean when we do a regression analysis. So it means answering and laying out explicitly things like, well, we take for granted we're going to look at transformations of the variables. Uh, all, all the textbooks tell us to do it. What they don't tell us is, well, when do we do that? Do we do it before we look for outliers, after we look for outliers, before we select variables in the model, after, before assessing heter heterogeneity, etc. That there's this whole combination of things that go on. And it's a multiplicity problem. We just don't know what to do first. In many cases, it might not even matter. In other cases, it most certainly will. Well, getting on to the introduction by our chairman, I will be talking a bit about where we're, we're coming from. And I have been involved with the development of a program called REX, which was a regression expert. And Rex, in fact, encoded a plan for simple linear regression. That it encoded how I would like to have seen a regression analysis done. And it's what I'll call a static plan. It didn't change from analysis to analysis. It was always there. Now, what did it do? Well, it allowed a non-statistician to get what I'll call a good analysis of their data. That is, much better than I think they would have gotten from a handheld calculator, much better than an ordinary statistical package, that would have given you all the diagnostics and re residual plots, but wouldn't have acted upon them. It also provided limited advice and explanation uh, to non-statisticians that had a lexicon or a dictionary for terms they weren't familiar with. And finally, what we tried to make it do was to provide a playground for statisticians to build 
their plans into software, to study them and to calibrate and compare how different statisticians might do regression or some other uh, type of analysis. Well, it did some of those and it didn't. Uh, we, we tried to make it do all of those. Uh, we, we learned some lessons from, from this thing. Uh, one is that uh, statisticians weren't very impressed, mainly uh, because it was too aggressive of a system for their liking. Statisticians want control of their analysis. They want a passive uh, plan, not an active, aggressive plan. On the other hand, non-statisticians loved it. They wanted less. I mean, non-statisticians would prefer a black box approach to regression analysis, or any analysis. Uh, the interesting thing, though, is that non-statisticians, the one comment they always had was they actually learned something by watching how this particular automated plan did regression analysis and they claimed it was something they weren't getting from textbooks. The te textbooks tended to teach them what happened uh, one technique at a time, but never put them in, in perspective, where this was done, where this was done, and a logical procedure for doing it. So they, they liked it from that point of view, and they actually learned from it. The, the other difficulty, and, and in particular something that never caught on, was that statisticians had great difficulty putting their plans into Rex. And partly it was because the environment was deficient. We were running in a Unix environment using something called Franz Lisp. Lisp is not a programming language for statisticians. It's not a bad language, but it's just not uh, very convenient for us. It's yet another thing we have to learn. Uh, but the other part is basically that it's hard to make a plan. It's hard for us to look back at how we do an analysis and to encode it and to be totally happy with it. And because it's hard to do that, we just tend not to do it. We do things that are easier, or things perhaps so that we're more comfortable with. So it just never got done. Well, because it never got done, we decided uh, that we'd, we'd like to do something to encourage this, this type of activity. And so what I want to tell you about in my remaining five, I guess five or six minutes, is the current work that's going on at Bell Labs uh, on what we'll call descendants of Rex. Uh, these, these descendants are actually taking two quite different tacks. Uh, both are aimed at making it easier for statisticians to build such systems. Okay? The first system called student is a system which attempts to learn by example. That the, the, the plan that is encoded into Rex was actually devised by me by going through a statistical system, working examples, doing about five of these, and trying to summarize whatever I did in those into some plan, then trying this plan out on new data sets, and keep iterating this whole process. Well, student is an attempt to automate that process. So student is a system that's going to be looking over the shoulder of a statistician as it uses some statistical package for a particular type of analysis, and it will try to capture the analysis sequence of that the statistician uses in repeated sessions at the terminal. And so this way, a statistician can build up a plan, not by programming in Lisp or some foreign language, mainly by using what he knows best, a statistical system, to analyze data. The second tack that we're, we're exploring is uh, a system called TESS for tree-based expert systems in statistics. And basically, these are, this is what I'll call a search-based method. Uh, and it's actually an update of some earlier work that Daniel and Wood did in, in their book on regression. The basic idea with tests is to exploit computers with, for what they're good at. Humans are good at thinking and reasoning. Computers are good at number crunching and massive computation. And that's what TESS is intended to do. Uh, what is a search-based method? Well, suppose we're interested in summarizing a, a single batch of numbers. Well, think of all the possible descriptions we can give for a single batch of numbers. Okay. Now think of the vocabulary we're going to use to describe this, these, these collections of, of or, or this description. Things like symmetry may be important, modality of the distribution, uh, clumpiness, uh, independence, uh, uniformity. These are the types of words we use to describe a single batch of numbers. We might even say nor normality, things like this. Think of the transformations that we use to describe a single batch of numbers. We often say that the log of y is normally distributed with, 
this mean and this variance, rather than say the, the data come from a log normal distribution or some other distribution that we really can't pin down. So think of the whole space of descriptions and suppose that we can attach some measure of goodness to each of these for any particular data set. Now what a search-based method does is a try it, 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 it computes this measure of goodness for every possible description there is for this particular data set. And the best description is the description you use. Now for many cases that's going to be computationally infeasible because that space is too large. And the test research is a way to organize the search to make that feasible. Okay, now what we're doing here in this particular attack is not trying to mimic how a statistician does analysis. We're trying to mimic the performance. And in fact, we may even perform better than a statistician because a statistician, when, they do an, when we do an analysis, we don't exhaust all the possibilities. That we may, might make local forays into alternative models at some particular steps but we never look at it globally. So it's possible, just as in computer chess, that uh, computer programs have done better than humans, better than some humans, that maybe in data analysis, that by doing massive computation that we can do better. Well, how much time, more time? Oh, perfect. Uh, well, I mentioned two different architectures here that sound very different, and they are different, but they're also very similar. Both of these architectures are environments where we hope statisticians can build plans. Both are what we'll call expert systems by which non-statisticians can get quality analyses of their data. Something I can't go into a lot of detail about, but is some, a direct descendant of, of Rex, is that both use a tree-like representation for a plan. That is, this sequence of steps with alternatives blown up actually looks like a, a tree, say an inverted tree with a root and then with decision points along the way. And finally, both use examples in the plan building process. And the way that student uses it is obvious. That, that student is the program that looks over an, an analyst's shoulder and watches a complete analysis for many different examples. So examples are key. In the test system, a statistician enters the analysis tree himself, that he has to develop this before he goes to the computer. There are, there are some easy and simple editing procedures we have for putting in the tree, but once you have this tree, that isn't the end of it. That if you were to do exhaustive search, that would be all you'd need. But it's infeasible to do that, and you want the best solutions in a limited amount of time, so we use examples to guide heuristic search. Well, that's how the, the two systems are different to the development mode. How are they different to the user? Well, in a classical expert system, uh, an exp a user comes to the system and says, give me the regression of y on x, for instance. That, that's what it did for rex. Well, in student, they're gonna, the, the the answer that student gives is the regression of y on x that the developer would have given me because student has been watching the developer do these analyses. In tests, it's very different architecture. The user is going to come to the system and say, well, I have 10 minutes. Give me 10 minutes worth of regressions of y on x. Now, why does this make sense? Well, this second part makes sense because I said early on that we have no hope before the year 2000 to capture context-dependent knowledge in expert systems. There's a huge, massive project in, the, in America now on trying to put common sense knowledge into statistical, or uh, not statistical, but into AI programs. That at, in Austin, Texas, they're trying to put the knowledge of the Encyclopedia Britannica, that type of knowledge, into a computer in a form that can be drawn on by any other type of system. So it's not just simply typing in the Encyclopedia Britannica, it's organizing the knowledge. And that's, they feel that that's a minimum type of knowledge you have to know to operate in a common sense way. Now, this is a 10-year ambitious project which may never, ever see uh, the end. Now, TESS doesn't make any apologies for not having context in. We don't know how to put context in, and what we hope is by giving 10 minutes worth of regressions that among this 10 minutes worth there's going to be one that is useful and relevant given the context. 
that one of these might come out and say log of y is equal to a plus bx. Another one of these solutions will be that y is an exponential function of x. That second one, given the context, might be more relevant than the first. And by organizing the search in an intelligent way, we hope to give the best and let context be the decision maker. Now, you might say, well, this is completely off the wall. On the other hand, we've been using tools like this for variable selection for at least 10 years. That when we use subset selection procedures in a multiple regression program, we don't tell the regression program that this variable is the square of the other variable. We don't tell the regression program that this variable costs twice as much to collect as the other variable. We don't tell the subset selection program that this variable and this variable are measuring the same types of thing, but one is more accurate than another. Yet we do use subset selection pr procedures in multiple regression to help us get good subsets. The context that the variables were derived guide the selection after we do massive search for the good fitting models. And this is just a generalization of that idea. Well, the conclusions I have for this talk is that of these four stages of, of statistical problem solving, the fourth one is the one that we seldom do, and it's the one where the biggest benefits can accrue. That is, looking back. And once we've done this for a number of similar problems, we can actually start thinking about implementing it into software, at which point there are a number of benefits, one of which is automating the process itself so we can start studying it. Thank you.